the divine Oscar, a sobriquet I much enjoy, given to me by my small circle of admirers. A man of so many loves and talents, they tell me. Apparently, a controversial beacon of so many joys, especially in my beloved Dublin, oh, and of course in London. And I suppose it would be churlish not to include the Americans, but the sheer tedium of their immigration service almost prevents one travelling. You know, I remember some years ago a customs official in New York who I think said, and he declare, anything to declare, but one couldn't be sure. If there'd be any confusion, I simply said, nothing but my genius. Sadly, you all remember me mostly for my flawed and fatal love for Lord Alfred Douglas, better known to me as my beloved, yes, my beloved Bosey. There have been two times in my life when I've had the great fortune to fall in love with two marvellous women. Some years ago, I fell hopelessly in love with the wonderful Mrs. Langtree, better known to you as the notorious Lily Langtree, the Jersey Lily. She so occupied my mind that through one long freezing winter, I spent night after night on her doorstep just hoping for a glimpse of La Belle Dame Sans Merci. <laughs> One notable evening, so sure was I of gaining admittance to her house, her husband being his club, sadly, I fell asleep on the doorstep and I was awakened, covered in a mantle of snow, by a harsh kick from his lordship. Lily permitted me my pursuit through the following mad, marvellous summer, then she gently took me to one side and told me not to waste my time. I wrote a short poem to her, and the last two verses go, Well, if my heart must break, dear love, for your sake, let it break in music, for I know poets' hearts break so. Strange, I was not told that a brain can hold in a tiny ivory cell God's heaven and hell. Well, I got over Lily, and I returned to London, where I fell madly in love all over again. And this time I married the very gentle, beautiful Irish girl, Constance Mary Lloyd. <laughs> it might surprise you to know that we were passionately and mutually in love and supremely happy and ultimately blessed with two beautiful children. I still so enjoy being an exemplar of fine dress and the social world of wit, ideas and intellect. My greatest delight is to have espoused the green carnation, which I have to say I'm the only man in London to affect. I was to spend two lonely, miserable years at Her Majesty's pleasure in that ghastly prison in Reading. May I read you a letter written to my beloved Bosey? Dear Bosey, after long and fruitless waiting, I've determined to write to you myself as much for your sake as for mine. I'd not like to think that I'd passed through two long, miserable years of imprisonment without having had a single line from you or any news or message even except that which gave me pain. Our ill-fated and lamentable friendship has ended in ruin and public infamy for me and yet the memory of our ancient affection is often with me and the thought that Loathing, bitterness, and contempt might take the place in my heart once held by love. It's very sad to me. <laughs>